Good morning. Good morning. I welcome all of you to worship. I invite all of you in. Let us come. Let us be gathered by the grace, the peace of Christ as we worship. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Out of the blue, God comes to us. In the storms of life, Jesus walks towards us. As darkness closes in, the light of faith pierces the dark. Love calms our fear. Hope lifts our despair. Out of the blue, Jesus comes through to call our names to follow and serve as we raise our voices in prayer and praise, in worship and song. Please remain standing and let's join in singing hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
standing and let's join together in our opening prayer. God of grace and power, we, your people, have gathered here to be close to you, to hear again the words of freedom and hope, to sing again words of praise, and to be challenged to serve. We come to be your people of faith and fear, inspired to reach out and live out and carry out your mission of hope to a hurting world. Challenge our faith, O God. Rekindle within us the passion of your word. Help us see again your vision for us and your church as we worship you this day. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite our young disciples up for our young disciples' time. Come on up, guys. All right, good morning. Good morning, how are you guys? All right, so I'm gonna give you all a piece of paper. Here's a piece of paper. Here's a piece of paper. All right, you get a piece of paper, and I think I missed, who did I miss? Here, yep, you take that. Okay, so everybody got a piece of paper? All right, here you go, pick it up. Here's what we're gonna do. I want you to take it and see if you can rip it. Can you rip it? Can you rip it again? Was it hard? Was it hard? No. It's pretty easy, right? Okay, now who, who thinks they're strong? Who's strong? Who's raising their hand? All right, there you go, rip that whole thing. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. See how well he did? <laughs> so why was this why was this hard? Who else wants to try? Anybody else want to try? You want to try? All right, Sydney. All right. No, it doesn't work so well. Why why can't we why can we rip the single one so easy and not this one? It's thicker. It's got more pe it's still paper, right? Whoa, hello. <laughs> It's still paper, but it's got lots of paper. So you know what? When we gather together alone, we're kind of like the single piece of paper. We can, we can be, you know, we can get shredded sometimes, right? <laughs> but when we gather together as a group, like we gather together as a church, we can do really great things. But you know what? When you think of this paper as gathering with God, so that we're the single piece of paper, and this is God, and we join with God, are we torn up? No. Does God give us strength? Yes, that's right. And that's why we're here today. So when you see a simple piece of paper, see it like this, I want you to remind that you have God in your life to give you strength. That's why we turn to God in prayer. That's why we come to Sunday school and learn about God and what he's done for us and what Jesus has done for us. So let's say a prayer. Oh God, we give thanks for this time to be together for these young disciples. And I pray, oh God, that they rely on your strength as they head off to Sunday school, as they are in prayer. Your strength and your peace and your hope that passes all understanding. Be with them and watch over them, oh God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can give me your garbage. I invite you to go to Sunday school. Everybody else to stand. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another. All right, I'll take all your garbage. Thank you.
The Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 27, verses 1 through 8 and verse 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For it is in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John. It's there in your bulletin, and I invite you to stand for the reading of our gospel lesson. Hear these words from John's gospel. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. May God add a blessing to our hearing and living out of the scripture this day. You may be seated. The Pillsbury Doughboy, cute, cuddly, wanted for attempted murder. Not exactly. A woman in Kansas was sitting in her car on a hot day when she heard a loud bang. She felt the sharp pain in the back of her head. She was holding her hands behind her head when someone walked by and they said, Ma'am, are you okay? And the woman stammered, obviously in shock, I've been shot in the head and I'm holding my brains in. Well, it turns out it wasn't her brains, it was the dough. The Pillsbury biscuit canister had exploded in the back seat from the heat, making a loud explosion, shooting the dough into the back of the woman's head, thinking something was there. Sometimes our fears in life are like that, ladies. They're unfounded and they are irrational. But there are times when our fears in life are based on rational and well-founded reasons. We all know as we gather here this morning that life can be risky and hard and it can leave us with reasons to be scared or have anxiety or worry. However, at the heart of any struggle we may go through is the question, whose strength are we relying on to see us through? In this season of Lent, we've been looking at Wesley's 21 questions, sort of one question at a time. Last. Last week we looked at seven questions, we looked at one of them, and the one we looked at was, is Jesus real to me? Is Jesus a vital, living, real presence in our hearts and in our lives? Today we look at these next set of questions that deal with Christian character, and they deal with questions of, am I proud? Am I defeated in my life? Do I go to bed on time, get up on time? Do I grumble or complain constantly? Who or what do I allow to control my life? How do I spend my spare time? Am I self-conscious, self-pitying, or self-justifying? The definition of character is mental and moral qualities of a person, but there's a quote that I read that said, character is who you are when no one is looking. It is the essence of who we are formed by our choices, our principles, our beliefs, our habits of how we act and in how we think and especially in those times when no one's looking. And so for today, I invite us to consider one of these seven questions of this that forms our character and how we choose to make it through life. 
And the question is, am I defeated in any part of my life? Do I need God's help in my life? In other words, when our backs are up against the wall, when we don't, when we don't seem to see a way forward and our strength is failing, where do we turn? It takes a moral and it takes a spiritual courage to admit when we are defeated, to admit we need God in our hearts and lives, to admit we need help. So the question is where do we look for help? Is it in the things and the people of this world that are temporary or the things of heaven that last for eternity? Is it really our strength we need to rely on or do we need to rely on and trust in and surrender to God's strength? Do we give in to fear or do we turn to faith? And there's no one who knew this better, these questions to wrestle with, than David, the author of Psalm 27 that Marsha read. David's life has not been an easy one. He was plucked out of obscurity as a young boy, anointed king. The only problem was there was already a king. His name was Saul. And Saul was not really stable mentally. In fact, his sometimes violent behavior bordered on insanity. For a time, David worked to keep Saul calm through his music, but eventually Saul's jealousies and paranoia got the better of him, and he lashed out at David, threatening and trying to kill him. So Saul raised an army, and then David went and raised an army and went on the run as Saul hunted him. David knew all about being defeated and afraid and weak, He knew what it was like to be stalked by anxiety and pursued by worry. And that's what this psalm is about. But the heart of the psalm is that he knew the path that leads out, the path that leads to a peace that passes all understanding. And this psalm is all about calling us to follow that path. For it is in those times that we have a choice to make. We can go it alone or we can go with God. And so we hear David say to us in the psalm, the Lord is my light. Very often troubling times in our life are compared to darkness when we feel lost or we need direction. If you've ever walked into a room of total darkness, there's hesitation, caution, apprehension, because we're fearful about making a wrong turn or walking into something. The same would not be true when the lights are on. In the same way in life, there are troubling and there are dark times in which we can feel so lost and so alone, not knowing which way to go or or what to do as if we are in the dark. But like David, we have help. There is a greater light leading us. Once there was a small boy who was riding in the car with his parents on their way to visit his grandparents who lived several miles away. And as they were driving, this thick fog settled over the hilly countryside before they started home. And the boy was absolutely terrified, asking if they would be, if they were going to be all right, asking if they could even go a little slower than what they were going. And his mother turned to him and he said, gently, don't worry. Your father knows the way. His father had walked the road when there was no gasoline during the war. He had ridden the blacktop thousands of times on his bicycle, and for years he had made those weekly trips back and forth to visit his parents. How often when we can't see the road of life and have felt that familiar panic rising in our heart do we hear the echo of that mother's voice? And so focus on God who knows the way, who is our light leading us onward. David also notes in the psalm that the Lord is his salvation, which means the Lord is his rescuer or deliverer. In other words, David is not looking to other people or even to himself to fully rescue him or completely deliver him, but he is putting all of his trust and all of his hope in God. In our gospel lesson today from John, we meet a blind man. And this man was being used as an object lesson by the Pharisees to try to trap Jesus. So as he walks by, one of them says, to Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In other words, who caused this to happen, this man or his parents? Who is to really blame here? Why is there blindness in the world? Why poverty? Why illness? Who is to blame, nature or nurture, this man or his parents? And so Jesus, as he so often does, answers with a third option, one that the questioners didn't even think of. And Jesus says, neither this man sinned, nor his parents. This man is here before us, blind, so that the marvelous works of God can be shown. 
When Jesus sees someone in need, he doesn't use that person's plight to develop a political or a moral agenda. Jesus sees opportunity. He sees a chance to point out that there is power in weakness. There is power in focusing on God's strength that sustains us. So that we know that while God is not the author of our pain, God can bend and use our hurts in a redemptive way, in a healing way, in a way where our hurts and pains and struggles and setbacks, difficulties and defeats become the building blocks for service and for ministry to the world. And so this blind man was healed physically. But more important than the physical healing, he was healed spiritually by Jesus. But sometimes this new life comes about not through a physical healing, but sometimes the greater healing that we need is not physical, but it's a healing of our hearts and of our souls and our minds. It is often a healed soul that allows us to have a healthy attitude and mindset and perspective on life a perspective that allows us to reach out in powerful ways to lift others up and point the way to hope to those who are struggling. For we realize that the strongest and most beautiful people around us are those who realize that in their weakness and vulnerability that there is strength there. The parents of an autistic child who give valuable guidance to others in the same situation. The AA sponsor who patiently helps a fellow alcoholic to remain sober the survivor of abuse who provides a lifeline to those who are being abused, the wife of an Alzheimer's patient who offers support to families dealing with various types of dementia. And so focus on God, our deliverer, who gives us strength, who gives us healing, who gives us power, even in the weakest times of life. And David goes on to say the Lord is the stronghold of our life. A stronghold is a refuge. It's a place of safety from danger. And David is saying we should have confidence and peace, not because there are no serious storms in life, but because we have a secure place and a sure stronghold for the Lord is our refuge. The refuge he talks about is not a place. It's not a location, but is found in the fortress of our relationship with God, a relationship of hope and grace that holds us up. Because when we look to the greatness of our God, instead of looking to the greatness of our problems, our anxiety will fade. And so we need to focus on and hear the voice of Jesus this day as he hears to us through those storms of life, I am with you. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. For Jesus didn't come to bring half a life. He came to bring us salvation, wholeness, abundant life. Not to hoard, but to share, not to keep quiet, but to proclaim, not to ignore, but to live out. Writer Neil Lorenz tells how her friend, a young wife, a mother of three, chose to spend the last years of her life afflicted with a terminal illness. Linda made it clear from the beginning that her illness was inconvenient, annoying and unwelcome, but that it would not rule her life. She would not be defeated. She decided she'd be thankful and live faithfully, depending on God who had never let her down, no matter what was going on. Every morning, her family began with a short worship that included naming and thanking God for their blessings. It included her mentioning all the ways that her health was failing, all the ways that she was weak, all the ways that she needed God's strength to get her through that day. And so she and her whole family went on a, on a trip, and they went to the Cayman Islands, and they went to go take scuba lessons, because she wanted to scuba dive. It was her greatest dream. She took lessons at the local pool before they went on their family vacation, and once they were in the island, she rested and watched her family go out on daily excursions to the reef, but she wanted to go diving with them and be a participant and not just an observer. So in response to her incredible determination, and positive and hopeful spirit, a group of local diving instructors devised a way that she could join her family. Because her spine, because of her illness, was so brittle and ulcerated to bear the weight of the tank, they fitted her with a mask and a mouthpiece that as she breathed in it, they weighted it just enough to put her under the water. So you devised this method so that she could go diving, and it wouldn't injure her anymore than she already was. 
put her in any more pain than she already was feeling. So they floated this oxygen tank on a piece of foam above her, carefully added weights until Linda and the divers and the tank slipped slowly beneath the surface. And for nearly an hour with her entire family, she was able to explore with them the wonders and the beauty of the reef, something she'd always wanted to see. So later when her husband went up to pay for the extra time and all the effort that they had put in, all the materials they had needed, they were turned down with these words. We come and we dive here every single day. We've seen this reef hundreds and hundreds of times. We know every rock. We know every piece of coral. We know every fish on it practically. And today, however, we saw it through the eyes of someone with such courage and strength, such spirit and such faith and gratitude for living that we looked at it in a completely different way. It is we who thank you and your family for the day you gave us. It is we who can never repay you. Linda's body may have been broken, but her spirit soared. It may have looked like she was defeated, but it only looked that way. For through her faith, she had found power in weakness by relying on and trusting in a strength, in a stronghold, and a refuge greater than her. As we journey through the season of Lent, we come to the cross. This instrument of torture meant to defeat and humiliate and break a person before they died an agonizing death. It's ironic and surprising that a tool of torture and humiliation used by the Roman Empire to execute common criminals would be transformed into a symbol of faith, of love, and of hope. But such is the power of the spirit and the power of what happened on that rugged cross so long ago and continues to this day in our lives. For on that cross we see Jesus laid bare, fully open, one with us, one for us, on that cross, Jesus knows how we feel, knows our pains and knows our hurts, knows those times when we are broken and afraid, and yes, when we are defeated. For that's why Jesus is there in the first place, for you and for me, taking our pain and our burdens and our hurts that we might know, fully know a peace and a hope and a relief. This is the gift for which we have no words. This is the gift of the cross. This is the light of love shining forth like a beacon. This is what a deliverer looks like. This is what strength looks like. This is what power in weakness looks like. When Paul wrote, I'll gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. When I am weak, then I am strong. And so this day, do we come and do we admit when we are defeated in our lives? Do we come and honestly cry out knowing we need God's help in our lives and hearts? And so I close with this image. When an eagle knows that a storm is coming, it will fly to some high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, it sets its, it sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle soars above. It doesn't escape it. It just simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises above the winds that are bringing the storm. And so don't let adversity impact your spiritual life. Allow our spiritual lives to impact the struggles that we go through and the adversities that we go through. The hurts and the pains and the fears and the anxieties of life are always going to be with us. But the joy of this day is that we don't face them alone. For our God of light and salvation, our rock and our refuge, gives us strength and our hope to soar above. So that when we come and we feel defeated, we know there is help. We know there is strength, we know there is grace, and we know there is hope, and we know there is courage. Because there is a love greater than anything that we may struggle with. And so this morning I invite you, all of us, to have the courage, <clears throat> to have the courage to admit when we are defeated, when we do need God's help, to turn to God who is there, our God who went to the cross to offer us the strength and the salvation. And so I say to all of us this morning, take heart, never quit, stay with God, for we are God's people, standing on the very cornerstone of Jesus Christ in the shadow of the cross, that holds us up and that keeps us strong.
Amen. Let's stand as we proclaim this in song, as we sing, We Are God's People, hymn 2220. Let us come to be a people of prayers. We share our joys and our concerns with one another. Our ushers will give you a mic so we can hear one another, and those in our recording can hear you. So what joys do you have to praise God for, or the concerns you have? So Bridget. So I have two joys. The first joy, Jordan has her first wiggly tooth, and she's so excited. <laughs> um, my second joy is actually my testimony. Um, I was going through a lot of things at work and going in prayer and discussing it with my husband, I decided to put in my letter of resignation on January 26th. Putting in that resignation, I did not have a job. I did not have a job lined up at all. So I said, God, I'm putting all my faith and trust in you. So the night I put in my resignation, I went online looking for a job and Came across, came across a company that I was already interested in before, but they didn't have any opening. They had an opening. I applied. March 24th, which is Friday, I got offered the position. <laughs> <laughs> and throughout this whole time, I just saw God's work in action. I was supposed to give a three-month notice. I gave a two-month notice. It got approved for a two-month notice. It was just so many trials and tribulations just coming my way through this whole period, and I just saw God just opening the pathways for me. So my testimony goes along with your, your, your message today, Pastor, and just what we've been singing about, faith and having trust in God, because I'm standing right here. I'm a living testimony. God is real. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Other joys and concerns, and I have one for the choir, if Anyone in the choir has any prayers? Oh, down here with Eileen. Thank 
you. I have three joys. One is thanks for all your prayers. My mom had her surgery and has recovered very well and is at the point where she's now doing most activities as she did before she got sick, so thank you. Um, two is that uh, Jane Micklin is at home and moving along. Um, last I talked with Anne, she is, you know, active. The only problem is she can't really stand, so she's more um, either bedridden or assistance into a chair, but she's doing well. And the third <coughs> is greetings from Ruth. I saw her yesterday, uh, and she thanks you all for your prayers. She celebrated her 92nd birthday on <laughs> Friday, and many of you sent cards, both for uh, best wishes for her health and her birthday. She will be coming back to Meadowmere probably on Wednesday or Thursday. And her daughter Diane will be coming into town this week to help make that transition. So she says hi and thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Other joys, other concerns? So Marilyn, over here. I have a concern. I have had a young woman, Danielle, on the prayer chain for almost, well, since last August when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's 27, and she's gone through chemo, she's gone through surgery, and she's in the midst of radiation now, and they have decided to add a second chemo along with the radiation, and it has really knocked her out. So prayers for this young woman as she really tries to, to fight, and also prayers for her family, especially her mom, who's having a hard time not living in fear right now. So, okay. prayers for Danielle. All right. Other prayers for this day that you have to share? I have concerns for my son, my, son, my family. I always do this. This is the only second time I've ever talked, <laughs> but I always cry. So um, my son is struggling with his health. He hasn't been in school for almost three weeks, and we've had to make some tough decisions, one of which is that he will be changing schools. So I ask for your prayers that that goes well. And we've also decided that we're taking him on a wonderful trip we're leaving next Friday to the beach, and so please um, be with us as we do that. Okay. Our prayers are with you and your family, with your son. Any other joys or concerns or prayers to lift up this day? Please hold those in our prayer chain, um, in your prayers, in our hearts at home, those serving our nation, and the card that you received at the beginning of the service, please fill out if you'd like to be a part of the prayer chain, that we may pray with you and pray for you. So with these prayers you've named and those in our hearts, let's pause. Let's pray. Oh God, we gather this morning <clears throat> in the midst and in the heart of your grace and your hope and your peace that surrounds us in this life, this life that can have its ups and its downs. It can have its tremendous, wondrous joys and heartbreaking losses and struggles, worries and anxieties and fears. But, O oh Lord, help us this morning to hear these words of Psalm and this lesson that Jesus teaches us, to rely on you, our light and our deliverer, our refuge and our stronghold, to know that the storms of life we will not avoid, but to know that you offer us that strength and that hope, that grace and that peace to make it through. For you, O oh Lord, never leave our side. So God, we pray for those who, who are in need of your prayers this day. For those who are sick, we pray for healing of body and of mind. We pray for strength for those who are caregivers, caring for children, caring for parents, caring for those in our community. O oh Lord, be with them. Let them know that they are not alone. O oh Lord, be with those who are, are struggling in life, feeling lost, feeling alone, feeling abandoned, struggling in so many ways. O oh Lord, let your light and let your hope surround them in this time. O oh Lord, open our eyes and open our hands and guide our feet that we may see those in need, 
and those who struggle, and be with them a powerful witness to share the hope of our faith in you. For we gather this morning also with joys, and the joys of new jobs and new opportunities and new chapters in life, the joys of celebrations, um, the joys of family and friends that journey with us, the joys of our church family that prays for us and, and walks with us, and the joys of your son, Jesus Christ, who went to that cross, who knows our hurts and who knows our burdens, who is there to offer us the strength so that in those times of life, O oh God, when all we can do is cry out that, yes, we are defeated, that, yes, we need you, we know that you are there reaching back. So, oh Lord, help us to learn that lesson of the cross as we walk forward into our days. Oh, Lord, we gather this morning to lift to you these prayers, but there are, there are others on our hearts. And so we pause for a moment to let your Holy Spirit touch us, move through us, to take this time to listen to you, to lift you our prayers in this time of silent prayer. Oh God, as you've heard our prayers both silent and spoken, hear us now as we join with one voice as we pray this morning. Our Father. announcements for us. Um, remember the, well, our sanctuary choir <laughs> with their beautiful music this morning. We're just going to rehearse right after worship. Um, also, we've been through the month of March um, distributing our brand new picture directories. They're out on the little table out here behind the audiovisual desk in the narthex. So I invite you to pick it up. If you want it online, that's the instructions to go to our website and our password for MUMC with lowercase letters. If your picture isn't in it, please send in a picture. We'd love to include you. This is something we're doing here so we can update it here on site. Our lunch bunch meets every Tuesday, so it'll be this Tuesday with our study. We're going to wrap up the one we were doing on history and prophecy and move on to one on the minor prophets. We're going to look at Jonah this week, and then we have a delicious lunch at noon. Tai Chi on Monday and Friday at 11, and we have a meal site that's coming up this Thursday. So sign up today. The sheets are down there. Bring your fruits and dessert. Um, to serve. It is our, our confirmands, and so I'll invite our confirmands to sign up if they're free and, uh, and available. Um, so sign up to provide the desserts and the fruit that we will need. And thank you to those who went last Thursday and served at the meal site um, last Thursday as well. Um, our Lenten Bible study is continuing. We'll meet this Wednesday, and then we'll meet the first Wednesday of March. We're looking at the 24 hours that changed the world, so I invite you to come. And then in your bulletin is a little purple sheet. These are our spring flowers. So the deadline is April 2nd. So all you need to do is just fill it out and uh, put it in the offering plate. Today is also the outreach team's blanket Sunday. And so they're set up um, in, the, in the narthex. So before you go to fellowship time, I invite you to stop by the table. So for a $10 donation, that donation will go towards buying emergency blankets for refugees and homeless that are hit hard in areas of natural disasters and who are in need. And as a thank you, you will get an original Easter card creation by our kids here at MUMC. So I invite you to stop. I invite you to make a donation because every donation will literally provide relief and provide support to someone um, who's really, really, really going through a very difficult time um, in their life by providing these blankets. And as you see, it says, blanket the world with love. So I invite you to do that today. Um, I invite you to read through your insert for other announcements, other activities, things coming up. Did I miss anything that needed to be stated before we move on? All right. 
Well, then I invite us to come with open hands and hearts to recognize the many blessings in our lives and to give back to God. I'll invite our ushers forward to collect our morning offering and our sanctuary choir for another gift of music.
Let us pray. O Lord, we come this day and recognize that in the midst of our lives, we are truly a blessed people. Help us to have open eyes to see that as we this day give back to you. Give from our hearts, give you our hearts. Give you and pray your blessing upon all that we have given. Let it nourish our ministries, nourish our service and our witness that we continue to be your people of your endless hope and endless love and grace and of peace in Christ's name. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn from our worship and song, our green hymn, note, You Are My All in All. And so Christ truly is our all in all. And so may we go forward with Jesus as our light and as our refuge, as our stronghold, as our deliverer, as the source of our hope and of our peace that we share this day as we close our service singing Go in the Peace of God. Thank mm-hmm. you.